Welcome to my channel, where there are interesting and equally sensational stories. Listen to today's story. I'm a man of my 30s and was with my now ex-wife for 15 years, and we have three young kids. We had been together from 21 years old to 37. Being in my early 20s when we had first started dating, I ignored the huge red flags that she had cheated on her ex-boyfriend whom she had lived with for several years. She even had a threesome with two guys while she was at work. She stated she just wanted to feel wanted. My instincts were telling me different, but I stayed and tried to put it behind me. I was young and naive and assumed that, sure, we all make mistakes in life. Stupidly, I would later go on to ask her to marry me, and I knew I had a gut instinct telling me to not do it. After about three years of being married in which I thought things were going fine, and we had had our first baby. Things all started to change that winter of 2009. She started going to her friend's house a lot more. Then she started sneaking out of the house in the middle of the night. We would go to bed at say 10 p.m. and I would wake up at 1 a.m. and she was gone and the car was gone. She would return around 4 a.m. or so. This went on for months. I would call her phone and no answer. She had also started smoking and drinking. She had never been a drinker, but suddenly started. I was also in the middle of going into the military. We were arguing and fighting all the time as well. Where the hell was she going and what was she doing? I would phone and text her and no reply. She started smoking. She started smoking weed and drinking. I then left for basic training and five weeks into training. She tells me on the phone that she is pregnant. We had barely been touching each other I've carried this deep feeling ever since that my daughter is not mine. My boys are spitting images of me, but not her. Something has always just felt off. She lied and lied and talked me into thinking she is mine. Telling me I'm forgetting about the sexual occasions we had before. I know now that's gaslighting. I needed to focus on the training. And when I had gone home on leave, she was acting normal again and acting all loving, wife and picked me up from the airport. During that leave, her female friend was looking after her son, and my soon-to-be ex-wife got a text from her friend's boyfriend stating, Come get your baby, I will expose your, lover. My ex-wife had a story for everything yet. I fell yet again for it. I knew deep down there probably was a lover. I never did find out and after I left the military for medical reasons, we moved to a new area far away and life went on. For years, I've been terrified of a paternity test as it would crush me, and I'm so scared of destroying my little girl. However, I'm doing a paternity test this year. The person we believe she was cheating with was an unemployed alcoholic with bipolar who lived with his mother in a trailer park. Stay classy. Her story has also changed when I was coming home from the army when she said he had tried to kiss her. Nothing ever added up. She swears blind to this day that she never cheated but going by what was to come, it is pretty clear she was indeed cheating. Fast forward to 2020, and this is when everything fell apart on a major scale. At the start of lockdown virus in early April, she started acting weird. She started hiding her phone. Normally, we went to bed and it was face up beside the bed. Now, it was face down and on silent. She also changed the passcode. Her attitude changed on a level one never knew she was capable of being. She started screaming at me over minor issues. I would walk past her on the sofa, and she would scream that I was giving her dirty looks. She kept shouting at me that I never loved her, and I wanted a doormat. Everything I did was criticized. She was constantly angry and picked fights over everything. She then suddenly wanted to start going for walks on her own, which she had never done in 15 years. She has always had a turbulent relationship with her sister and a year previous had wanted to ghost her from her life altogether. She started taking the kids with her to stay at her sister's every single weekend. The kids say she never left the house, but I think the possibility is she was going out when they were in bed, or she was lying about going to the store. Change passwords on all her social media suddenly hit her friends list on Facebook, started drinking and hiding bottles of vodka around the house. Her phone was now glued to her, always in her pocket. Even if she went to the bathroom, it was in her pocket. One Saturday night, she got so drunk, 
she used the kitchen floor as a toilet. She then passed out and her phone kept lighting up at 2 a.m. I got into it via her fingerprint and that's when my whole world collapsed. She to this day does not even know half of what I found. I found she was sexting nearly 20 men via WhatsApp and Snapchat on a daily basis and storing their names under female names. She was making videos of touching herself at 6 a.m. when we were all sleeping and sending the videos and photos to them all. I caught her asking for men on Snapchat when they would be in the area to hook up. One of them ended a message saying, Now you can go home and finish yourself off. I will assume she met him in his car. She kept cheating with one guy in particular and despite being caught several times, she kept doing it. I went straight away to file for divorce the next day after discovery. She stated she had deleted her Snapchat and removed these men from her phone. I did once again gain access to her phone and found she had set up a new Snapchat under her maiden name and only had him added to it. A few days later, I left a GoPro camera hidden in the kitchen, recording, and caught her on camera taking her shirt down and taking sexual photos of herself, whilst the kids were 15 feet away in the other room. Not even 72 hours after lying straight to my face that there was no him and she was not cheating, I caught her red-handed. Then one Sunday evening, maybe a month later, I was informed she was on Tinder. I had a look and there she was and stating she had a boyfriend who wanted to watch her sleep with other men in front of him. She went into sad sausage face when I confronted her and showed her the screenshots of her profile. Of course, she said it was not her and just somebody being malicious. This person even managed to spell certain words exact way she does. Her other excuse to how it was not her was that they did not use her full name. Think of using Phil instead of fill up. Plus, Tinder also shows distance and this profile is within half mile of our house. I said, we should phone the police then and have it investigated. She stated she had bigger things to worry about, like our marriage than to worry about a stupid fake profile. Within 20 minutes of the Tinder profile being found out, it had been deleted or set to hidden. I had friends check also, and it was gone. Surely a catfisher malicious person would have had zero idea that I had found the profile. I informed and showed my solicitors and they asked how stupid does she think we are about like the time where I've seen hickeys all over her right bosom, and she claimed it was from our child climbing over her. Three young kids under the age of 11 and never once in those 11 years had any such bruising happened. She came home one afternoon and seen bruising on my right shoulder that looked like hickeys, and she went ballistic and started screaming and throwing things at me. She does not do irony. Things then got really bad, and I was arrested for suspicion of assaulting her, and this got social services involved, who then removed us from being together. Just too much to post all at once. Slowly trying to fit the puzzle together, but I know I won't, and what I've discovered is the tip of the iceberg. The suspicion of common assault was dropped by the police as there was no evidence and no witnesses. It was her friend who phoned the police that night, and my solicitors believe I was set up based on the evidence and the situation I was going through. My kids were interviewed twice by social services, but they stated that there was no concerns at all towards child safety and that I was clearly a decent father and the kids deeply loved me. They merely wanted my ex-wife and I apart and they declared I was not allowed to remain in the family home. She had then gone from ignoring me to messaging me about how much she ruined everything and how she had never stopped loving me and wishes she could go back so none of this had happened. Then she rages to screaming at me, accusing me of having girlfriends, and she screams that they are whores. I'm not had any girlfriends nor cheated. She used to assault me would grab me by the balls and dig her nails deep into me that it caused pain for days and then get right in my face and tell me that if I even looked at another girl, she would cut my manhood off so I could never get it up again. Irony, was she did these assaults whilst herself was cheating. Two weeks before Christmas, she turned up at the house unexpected and assaulted me by punching me in the chest over and over and screaming you're mine. You're mine. She even admitted to this assault via WhatsApp and promised that if she came over for Christmas Day with the kids, that she would not hit me. At Christmas, she tried to sleep with me. She even lied about the school therapist stating my nine-year-old daughter was bipolar. 
I spoke to the therapist on the phone and she stated she did not at any point mention bipolar as she has not qualified so forth to even say such a thing. I ended up classed as homeless and now have my new home and my now ex-wife as of five weeks ago after the divorce hearing was granted for adultery. Stated you've come out smelling of roses on the day I sadly bumped into her while moving. How having 15 years of my life, losing my home and my kids, counts as smelling of roses is beyond me. I should also mention that social services at no point met with me nor spoke to me to hear my side of events. They just automatically took her side and removed me from the home. That day, she cried and said how she wishes we could go back and for none of this to have happened. Then a week later, she turned to awful rage upon receiving the court letter about the time and date for the divorce hearing. States she threw out the items that belonged to myself that she had asked for me to leave. We are now in a situation of potential parental alienation as I receive zero updates on the kids, no calls, no messages, no contact at all. She had previously promised that she would provide updates, calls, and photos so forth on a regular basis, but sadly, that has not materialized and she now states that she should not have to chase me. I'm aware of via my soul sitters that this can be a common form of abuse after divorce. I've been reading this group for months now, and the one thing I truly believe is that there are no second chances. Cheaters will try and hide the cheating better. They will lie, gaslight, blame shift, and set you up in extreme cases. What I've wrote above is only the tip of the iceberg as to what had been going on. I'm proud of myself for having divorced her. Let's get a couple comments from the peanut gallery. Crix 068 says your worst enemy is your own passivity. Don't get me wrong. A cheater is gonna cheat no matter what. But all the other abuse comes from her knowing you would do nothing about it. I recently watched a clip from season 1 of Vikings the other day. It was the scene where Ragnar Lothbrok and the other Vikings came across the monks. I know how easy it was for them to massacre them and steal what they wanted as these men had neither the means nor ability to defend themselves from this attack. It's a theme that has played out from the beginning of time. Being passive has never helped anyone. Standing your ground and being assertive has. Our next and last comment comes from Condor 90046. As one service member to another, thank you for your service. Now, I'm going to tell you what I learned about relationships in my 12 years of service. You and I could go on for hours about what we have witnessed with infidelity concerning significant others and deployed teammates. I have seen the toughest of men break down and sob uncontrollably finding out about what was going on back home. My team had to physically restrain a member who was packed and going a wall. To confront his wife and probably inflict great bodily harm on the affair partner that probably had no idea he was coveting the wife of one of the baddest ass operators I've ever known in my career. I took a pretty good shot to the ribs, but we calmed him down and made him see reason. How did she get caught? The dumbass was going to do her nightly Skype call with him and set it all up and unbeknownst to her. My teammates who has always been very punctual, signed on five minutes early, and she had already hit connect and waiting. He connects and there she is giving the affair partner a goodnight kiss right in line with the PC camera. So instead of him destroying his career, he filed for divorce instead. No kids, so a wife of our little family went over with another and told her her husband knew. And if she were smart. She would pack her worthless ass up and move out of base housing before the end of the employment. She did. I don't know why many of us men have a savior complex, or white knight syndrome, but we do. We think we can take a fractured soul of a woman and show her that everything will fall into place after a year with us. I've tried it twice in my life, and the only result was losing a little bit of my soul twice. And being in the military just made it easier for them to make the bad choices they have been making all their lives. I will leave you with this. There is nothing you can do that will change this woman. All the love and kindness cannot and will not exercise the demons that possess this woman's soul. The only thing it will cost is yours. This is years of therapy, and she's going to have to want to do the work and face those demons. Godspeed.